Quote from Graham Hancock, it is important to know whether there are missing chapters in our history. In particular, whether there was a lost civilization that was much more advanced than the official hunter-gatherers of the last ice age. In Turkey, there are huge cities that look like ant farms dug deep into the earth. Hundreds and hundreds of rooms, the construction of which must have required enormous effort. And today, we reveal what these overwhelming sites underground are all about. At first glance, the hidden realms of antiquity appear simply breathtaking. But on closer inspection, they also raise a number of pressing questions that we are still unable to answer today. What motivated the people of that time to build secret complexes like Derenkiyu? Who built the invisible city? When and for what purpose? And above all, why do we owe one of the greatest archaeological sensations of the 20th century to a chicken's spontaneous walk? Be sure to stay tuned until the end and see for yourself what architectural wonders our ancestors created beneath our feet. Some things are simply inseparable. Light and shadow, ebb and flow, your click and the subscribe button. And of course, humans in caves. It is well known that natural shelters served as living, cult and burial spaces for the earliest representatives of our species for thousands of years. The Rising Star Cave in South Africa and the French Lascaux Cave, with their unique fossils and paintings, testify to the special significance that these hidden rock worlds had for our distant ancestors. And yet, the inhabitants of the past sometimes gave nature a helping hand and created their own artificial cave systems. Four Chinese farmers discovered this for themselves in 1992 when they pumped water out of a pond and shortly afterwards came across a mysterious opening that led straight into the carved heart of a completely unknown civilization. Since then, 24 of these so-called Longyu Caves have been found. But unfortunately, we don't know who created them or what purpose they served. Now, the discoverers of the Longyu Caves were not trained archaeologists but they were human after all. However, there are other ways of looking at it, because when all is said and done, many an Indiana Jones wannabe is much more feathered. As you might have guessed, we're talking about the chicken mentioned at the beginning. But what exactly happened? Well, to understand that, we have to go back to the small Turkish town of Derenkiyu in 1963. At that time, one resident was faced with a rather unusual problem. His chickens kept disappearing through a hole in the basement wall. At some point, the man decided to tear down the cellar wall and see where his clucking companions were going. But what unfolded before his eyes was not a chicken paradise, but rather the wildest dream of any archaeologist. The chicken catcher had actually opened the gate to an invisible world that had been slumbering unnoticed in the ground for centuries. The Hidden City of Derenkiyu the professional investigation that was subsequently launched revealed that this was by no means just some ancient cellar vault, but nothing less than a fully-fledged underground city. Now, the cities we know are mostly located above ground. So what is the story behind this hidden city? Why did the inhabitants of the past not build their city above ground, but literally into the ground? And who were these inhabitants anyway? Well, let's take a look at things in order. Just like its above-ground counterpart, the site is named Derenkiyu and extends a proud 85 meters into the depths. At the same time, the 2,500 square meter complex has at least eight floors and a complexity that is simply remarkable even from today's perspective. In fact, the individual levels and rooms were not carved into the rock at random, but were subject to an overarching system that left nothing to be desired. The upper floors mainly served as living and sleeping quarters, but at the same time, there was also a wine press and even a monastery. The lower floors were used as storage and meeting rooms, but that's not all. Derenkiyu also had its own dungeon, where underground residents who had fallen out of favor were likely to find themselves. Faith was not neglected far from the light of day either. In addition to the monastery complex mentioned above, several small churches were built there with the so-called Cloverleaf Church standing out particularly from the ranks of religious meeting places. The bottom line, however, is that humans were by no means the only creatures to dive underground at that time. 
The stables found here leave no doubt that the inhabitants of Derinkyu lived side by side with their domestic and farm animals. And while we're on the subject of inhabitants, the question naturally arises as to how many people actually lived in Derinkyu. Unfortunately, we cannot say this with absolute certainty. On the contrary, estimates of the exact population vary widely, ranging from just 3,000 to as many as 50,000 people. Who created Derinkyu? But no matter how many people Derinkyu may have ultimately housed, given its location underground, it stands to reason that they did not want to be seen, and above all, they wanted to remain among themselves. This desire was also reflected in the architecture. To seal off the site from the outside world, its builders constructed so-called rolling stone doors. These were massive, approximately 450 kilogram closures that could be rolled in front of the entrance from the inside when necessary, transforming them into an almost insurmountable barrier. However, the people inside were not completely isolated. Communication with the world above ground was maintained by narrow shafts leading from the first two levels to the outside. These historic intercom systems were between 3 and 4 meters long and had a diameter of around 10 centimeters. The ventilation system was just as cleverly designed. To supply Derinkyu with the air necessary for survival and to ensure air circulation, the builders created more than 15,000 shafts, and that was just on the top floor. In doing so, they also created a prime example of sustainability, because the ventilation system actually still works today. The air shafts were also used to transport water, and the inhabitants of Derinkyu, above ground, were even drawing water from the wells shortly before the hidden city was rediscovered. At the time, however, no one had any idea of the architectural masterpiece of the past that is represented. As a brief interim conclusion, it can be said that the impressive dimensions and ingenious design of Derinkyu are simply breathtaking. And yet the central question remains, who was responsible for creating this remarkable site? Before we go into this question in more detail, we should briefly consider another fact. Derinkyu is not an isolated case. So far, 36 of these invisible structures have been discovered in Cappadocia, but they are probably only the tip of an even larger archaeological iceberg. Experts estimate that at least 50 and perhaps even hundreds of such hidden cities lie dormant in the region. And they all have one thing in common. We cannot say with absolute certainty when they were built or which people were responsible for them. Some researchers believe that the Hittites were the forefathers of these isolated underground worlds. This small Asian ethnic group was active in Syria and parts of present-day Lebanon in the second millennium BC, although their capital, Hattusa, was located in northern central Turkey. Other historians, however, consider it more likely that Derinkyu was built by the Phrygians. The roots of this Indo-European people date back to the 8th millennium BC, but Christians are also suspected of having left an underground mystery to posterity. This assumption is based on the idea that Derinkyu was an architectural response to an emergency. The persecuted Christians needed a safe and above all secret place of refuge that was hidden from eyes of their pursuers. And although the exact origins of Derinkyu remain unclear, it is at least certain that it was Christians who gave the complex its present appearance between the 6th and 10th centuries. The Question of the True Purpose As mentioned above, the assumption about the purpose is based on the interpretation that it was a place of refuge, a hidden fortress that offered reliable protection from all external dangers. But are there any other possible explanations? Well, it is clear that Christians in the Roman Empire did not have much to smile about. Initially spontaneous and limited to local areas, the persecution of Christians in Rome reached unprecedented levels in the 3rd century when the emperor made it an official state affair in order to curb the spread of the still young religion and systematically destroy its structures. In addition to the Romans, however, the Seleucs also posed a serious threat to Christians. The heyday of this princely dynasty is dated to the period between 1047 and 1157 AD, and it ruled an empire that stretched across Central Asia and parts of the Arabian Peninsula. 
Ultimately, however, researchers are also discussing the theory that Derinkiyu was not built in response to the persecution of Christians at all, but simply because of the weather. This admittedly not so exciting hypothesis refers to the harsh climactic conditions in the region. The winters here are bitterly cold and snowy and the summers are hot and dry. But underground, you are safe from the extreme effects of the seasons. So Derink U may have been built originally to provide a storage place for the harvest that offered constant temperatures and reliable protection from moisture. According to this theory, the invisible granary was only rediscovered later by Christians and eventually significantly altered. And speaking of Christians, if you click on the button below our video, you can sign up for a free subscription to Christian, so you'll never miss a new post from us again. See you soon!